Over the next few videos, what I would like to do is begin a, a little bit of a, a tutorial on at least my approach to debugging or analyzing, verifying, whatever you want to, word you want to use, embedded systems. Now, I've started a list of the kinds of things that have, I have found important in the past. One of the first and frankly most important areas with embedded systems is the power. And by that I mean you must understand the quality of the power both in terms of the power being supplied to the system and by the way the, the thing you see over here blinking is a demo board made by Regal called the DS6000 and it's an example of the kinds of, of thing that you might see. Uh, it contains a field programmable gate array and a number of other uh, surrounding chips. It runs on a 25 megahertz clock. That's not very fast compared to modern systems. Many of modern systems run with clocks of 200 or higher megahertz. But the quality of the power determines how how close you can push the performance of your digital system to its absolute maximum. Without good power quality you'll find that not only do the circuits not perform as expected, but you get all kinds of random events that are very, very hard to trace down. And when you do trace them down, the only way to really fix them is to improve the quality of your power. So that's an important area, as well as that the power meets all the specifications for the uh, particular system you're working with. The next area is signal integrity. It includes the quality of the signals, things like how much noise, uh, what, how much jitter, and so on. And once again, verifying the specifications as well as the timing. I mentioned jitter. Clocks often aren't uh, precise. Maybe I should say they never are. The question is how far off are they? And is the timing of your uh, digital system adequate to perform the tasks you want without introducing errors? The system generally consists of analog and digital circuitry and interconnects. Now the interconnects can consist of buses, both parallel and serial. They can consist of short or long traces on a printed circuit board, or in the case of large systems, they might even include interconnects from one board to another or from one panel to another that require special consideration in terms of the interconnect. Now, here are three more that we probably won't do much about but we might. One has to do with safety, and that means not only safety for yourself, but also safety for anyone who uses this unit. That includes things like isolation from the power line, but it also includes a, a number of other issues that, quite frankly, could take a course in itself. Thermal issues. Does the unit get too hot? If so, in what areas does it get too hot? How are you going to get rid of that thermal energy? And finally, an area that has become of preeminent importance today because there's so many switching power supplies and so much high-speed digital logic that electromagnetic interference can be a real bear in a modern design. So uh, we're not probably going to talk about EMI but just keep it in mind. Now one reason I'm doing this video is a kind of heads up for those who might want to uh, make some suggestions, add to, the, uh, add to the list. And one of the things I'm going to be doing is using 
the MSO 5000 by Regal to demonstrate some of these concepts. I'm also going to be using a couple of boards. I showed you this one that uh, is made by Regal. There's one made by Siglent up there. But let me give you an idea of the kinds of things we're going to be looking at. On the oscilloscope you see a waveform. Let me turn off this menu. And there is a clock signal. Obviously it has a little bit of a problem. But notice the, the lower signal. There's a little item blinking here. Now I've turned on persistence. This is the Regal DS4000 that I'm showing you now. And from time to time I'll come back to this oscilloscope because I will contrast it. This is one, uh, this is probably the best oscilloscope that I have owned to date. I'm hoping the MSO 5000 will outperform it. But frankly it's been very reliable and very useful to me. Uh, it uh, has the 500 megahertz upgrade so it's very responsive. But the main thing I want to show is these are the kinds of issues. There's obviously something going on there. So the question is, if this is your design, can you figure out what's going on? Can you figure out how to fix it? Those are the sorts of questions we're going to be talking about over that same period of time. I'm going to be looking at the MSO 5000 by Regal. The first video I plan to do is a feature overview just a kind of, uh, call it a gee whiz video, of all the things that are in the MSO 5000. And in the course of that, I'm going to also try to clear up some confusion that may exist about things that do or don't exist in the MSO 5000 because, frankly, it has evolved over a period of time. And some of the videos you find on YouTube say that the MSO 5000 does this, when it really doesn't, or does not have this feature when it now does have. Now, it may not have had it when they did their uh, analysis. So I'm going to do a feature overview. Then I'm going to start on uh, a series of videos that begin with basic setup of an oscilloscope, and I'll be using the 5000 as the example. Then we'll look at the vertical section, the horizontal section, and then a couple of the features, and this is sort of a spoiler alert for the features overview. The 5000 contains a digital voltmeter and a counter that you can turn on. And the uh, we'll look at those. Then one of the important areas that doesn't get a lot of attention is the whole idea of sampling and its effect on what you can see and what you can't see on an oscilloscope. Following on with that is triggering. Being able to trigger on an anomaly like the signal we just saw with the little runt in the middle of the clock pulse is very important. We'll also do some power analysis. We've already talked about how important power is. Then math, math uh, operations, measurement operations. Then we'll get to the arbitrary waveform generator We'll look at histograms, and by the way, when we do the AWG, we'll probably also look at Bode plotting. Histograms and the importance of those and reference waveforms, which give you uh, comparisons, the histogram over time and the reference waveforms. Uh, allow you to compare one one waveform with another. Then the use of pass-fail analysis to find out how often your system is failing to meet a particular specification. We'll also be talking about recording and playback and the impact of things like embedded, uh, I'm sorry, segmented memory on the ability to record and playback a lot of uh, data 
over a long period of time, but in a way that you can see it in fine detail. Search and navigation go with recording and playback. The ability to search through a large amount of data and find the signals that you're interested in looking at. The display of the oscilloscope, things like persistence and uh, how you get a display on the screen that allows you to begin following and tracing the uh, your digital or embedded system design. Then since many embedded systems use serial uh, protocols, we'll be talking about triggering on protocols and also on decoding protocols. These are serial buses uh, predominantly where uh, that are used, for example, to transfer uh, information from memory to a programmable gate array or a, a uh, analog to digital converter or a uh, digital signal processor and so on. So here is an example of the kind of thing that a modern oscilloscope can can help you find much quicker than uh, the kind of oscilloscope that uh, was used back in the day. And by back in the day, I'm talking about, say, 60s through 80s. Beginning in the 90s, these digital oscilloscopes began to uh, outperform the analog oscilloscopes in almost all respects. But one of the places where they really added was the ability to examine waveforms. Now, what you see here, I won't get into the details of it because this is just a demonstration, but the waveform at the top is a clock signal that has an occasional glitch, a runt glitch. And this is coming from a, a Regal uh, DS2, uh, DS6000 demo board. And this glitch shows up about every 100,000 clock cycles. So it's fairly infrequent and would be very, very difficult for an oscilloscope without the analysis capabilities. This particular display you see is on a DS4000 Regal oscilloscope. But as we'll see later, uh, this same kind of thing can be done on the DSO uh, or the MSO 5000. So you may notice that just before this glitch, this next signal, which should be a uh, square wave, and notice the green signal. That's the reference trace for for this signal, and it should be. Uh, a square wave, but it also has an anomaly, and the anomaly is that occasionally it fails to trigger. Now what is supposed to happen is this is supposed to follow the waveform above, but at this point it fails to properly latch in the, uh, in the high state and falls back to the low state. And what that causes it to do is to miss a cycle. Notice that here it resynchronizes, but during this time, this state and the clock signal are uh, misaligned. And it's uh, probably because this clock falsely uh, triggered, or it could be that what caused this element to fail to trigger is what caused this glitch later. It, in this case, it really doesn't matter, but the idea is what, what we have done is we recorded this signal using a runt trigger, which we'll talk about, and we recorded channel 3 using the same record feature. And then we went through and analyzed the error frames. And you may notice down here it says error frame is 2578. I don't know if that's very readable. Let me. Zoom in a little bit. There we are. 
you see that it's air, it's frame 2578. Now I've recorded 5,000 frames here. Once again, what we're trying to show is not this specific design because it's just a demo board, nor this particular oscilloscope, though it is a good one. Uh, what we're trying to show is the kind of signal anomalies that are present in embedded systems, well, in any digital system, but they are particularly difficult to, to diagnose without the capabilities to record and analyze signals over a long time span. Look at them in detail, but record a lot of them. So this is the sort of thing that we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. So I hope you'll stay tuned over the next few uh, weeks or maybe months, who knows. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. I'm uh, expecting some input from viewers as well as from some students that may or may not choose to comment on YouTube. So. Uh, so look forward to some changes in this agenda, but for right now, I hope you'll stay tuned. I hope that we can produce some useful videos. I hope this video might be useful in giving you some kind of an overview, but more importantly, it's intended to be a little bit of a teaser to get you thinking about embedded systems and what you might like to know or what you might like to review. So look forward to that. Get in the lab. Do some experiments. It's, it's good to be a lab rat. Don't be a lab runt. Stay tuned to, the, to here. Look around on YouTube for other similar channels. And in the meantime, please stay safe and have a nice day.